any Daniel Defense rifle is one of the most battle-ready rifles you can pick up right off the shelf. Like all of its fellow versions, the Daniel Defense is a mil-spec plus. That's how Daniel Defense tries to define themselves, is really being mil-spec plus. What they mean by that simply is uh, a hair above mil-spec. So whatever the military is going to be using, that's what they uh, set as their base, and they try to exceed that, hence that plus after the word mil-spec. I've put at least 3,000 rounds through this rifle. That's because a conservative estimate. I definitely lost count, but yeah, 3,000 rounds, not a single hiccup. I used every single type of magazine I could find. I used every different type of ammunition I could find. I used 77 grain, 62 grain, 55 grain. I used reloads. I used factory ammo. I used Hornady VMAX. I used everything I could possibly get my hands on, and this rifle ate it all. All the Daniel Defense DDM4 rifles come with a forged receiver set. Now, this is actually confusing to a lot of people because on the website, it actually says that the upper receiver has been billet machined. And to the best of my knowledge, they're simply wrong. There's clearly forged markings on the upper receiver. If I had to hazard a guess, I would say that they are billet machining their forged receiver. It is definitely a forged upper receiver and forged lower receiver. I can 100% uh, confirm that. Now the DDM4 V9, this particular model here, comes with a 16 inch cold hammer forged M4 profile, mid-length gas system, chrome lined barrel. Yeah, that's a mouthful. But the barrel is probably the most important component of your gun. If you don't have a good barrel, you don't have good accuracy, and if, it also means you might not have a good chamber, which means you don't have good reliability. For those of you who don't know, Daniel Defense does manufacture a lot of their stuff in-house. They manufacture their own barrel. In fact, if you don't know that Daniel Defense makes some of the best fighting barrels out there, you've been living under a rock or you're brand new to this. You are getting a top of the line barrel. The next most important component to any AR-15 is going to be your bolt carrier group. Again, Daniel Defense spares no exception here, especially when trying to meet that mil-spec plus standard that they've set for themselves. It is a full auto-rated, magnetic particle inspected, staked gas key, phosphate coated bolt carrier group. I honestly think Daniel Defense bolt carrier groups are right up there with BCM. I think they are some of the easily top three bolt carrier groups you can get out there on the market today. Now this rifle has a mid-length gas system. That's gonna mean a little bit less felt recoil to the shooter. Also, they put a heavy buffer in here. That's even a little less recoil felt to the shooter. And if you do something as crazy as I did, which is put a Lantac Dragon on this gun, although it'll bark very loudly, you will virtually feel no recoil in the shoulder. It truly is one of the softest shooting rifles I own. The rail is a 15 inch Daniel Defense DDM4 rail. I cannot express to you how lightweight Daniel Defense makes their rails. I honestly think if you're going to buy a quad rail of any kind, you need to be looking at Daniel Defense first. They are simply the premier quad rail company. Although I had options to get like a V11 or, you know, key mod, M-Lock variations of the Daniel Defense rifles, I feel like that did injustice to Daniel Defense. You see Daniel Defense making the best quad rails out there, I felt like I needed to get that quad rail on there. And at how lightweight they're able to make these things, there's really no offset. There's no reason not to get the quad rail. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking, uh, key mod's great, and don't you own key mod? Yeah, I own key mod. Uh, M lock's great, don't you own M lock? Yeah, I own M lock. Oh, didn't M lock beat key mod in the army? Blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, probably. But guess what? Quad rail beats that every time. I, I, I own the best key mod rails. I own the best M lock rails. Okay, Geisley, BCM KMRs, all this stuff. And I'm here to tell you that there's still more accessories available to the Picatinny rail than anything else. In fact, almost every time you want to add something to your key mod or M-Lock rifle, you're having to put a Picatinny rail section on the gun anyway. So from a simplicity mindset, from someone who says, I just want the simplest way to attach stuff, a quad rail is still the way to go. Let's talk about the furniture. The Defense's defenses furniture is kind of a weird thing to me. You see, I don't like rubberized anything. I don't like MOE plus stuff. I had an MOE plus grip on an AK. I got rid of it. I had an MOE K2 plus grip on an AR pistol. I got rid of it. I don't like rubbery feeling grips. I don't like ergo grips or anything like that. Dale Defense's furniture is kind of a hybrid. You see they have their uh, polymer, fiberglass injected, molded, whatever this stuff is. It's a plastic and um, it, uh, it has rubber over moldings over it. So there's parts of it that are rubber and parts of it that are plastic. To me, I have no quarrel with this. And that slimy feeling I get with uh, rubber, I really don't get that on this furniture. And I believe it's because of the traction I'm getting because of the cuts they did in their rubber. Those kind of arrow shapes, those big deep uh, crevices and valleys inside of the patterns, I think that really allows me to get a strong grip and my hand doesn't slide and feel slick and gooey at all. So I actually have no problem with the rubber. I heard one complaint, somebody saying that uh, the rubber on the stock 
grabs and pulls at your beard a little bit. Uh, I don't have the world's best beard, but I do have a beard. And uh, I've never felt it pull on my cheek. So I really, I didn't experience that. Uh, so, you know, that's a good thing to note. If you have a beard, I don't think it's going to pull at you at all. The foregrip is a little long for modern shooting. Uh, however, um, they've already come out with some shorter ones. So you'll probably see those on future builds. The stock itself is comfortable. It locks into place well. There's very little movement whatsoever and it's very comfortable to shoulder. It does come with a extended butt pad. I like that, that it comes with one that's a little thicker, maybe for someone who wants a little bit more added length of pull or someone who might want to feel a little less uh, recoil in their shoulder. Uh, I think it's really nice of them to include that. The pistol grip is really the only thing I have a legitimate complaint about. It's simply too small at the top of the grip for my hand and for most people's hands. Can you use it? Sure. Am I going to change it out? Probably not. I mean, it's definitely usable, but there's no beaver tail up there whatsoever. And for someone who is trying to compete with a company like Magpul, in fact, that's exactly what Daniel Defense was trying to do. Daniel Defense's rifles prior to making their own furniture came with Magpul's furniture on them. So we know that this is a direct competition for Magpul's business. To which I would say, add a beaver tail, or at the very least, continue making this pistol grip with the integrated trigger guard and just also make one that has a bigger beaver tail. Most people don't like how narrow it is at the top. Again, that's the only complaint I have. It's a nice grip overall. I have good contact on it, good purchase on it. I have good leverage on the gun. The, the grip angle is fine. It's just a little too narrow at the top. Also, the pistol grip is integrated with the trigger guard, meaning it's all one piece. I don't know why companies started doing this. I'm imagining companies like Daniel Defense are doing it to try to save money. They don't have to make two parts. They make one part and you have to install it in two areas. However, I'm not a big fan of it. If one part breaks or you want to change one part out, you have to change the other. I think that that's a little bit lazy on Daniel Defense's part. And that's kind of one of the only few things I can actually ding the gun for is that their furniture wasn't thought out. Of course, uh, somebody's gonna wanna change out their grip. I mean, that's like a given. People buy AR-15s and change out the pistol grip like the day they buy it. So obviously, the fact that now when you take it off, the trigger guard's coming off with it and you're going, crap, now I gotta go buy a trigger guard. It's just one more little thing that I think Daniel Defense could have done a little bit better. The trigger. The trigger is a mil-spec trigger. There is nothing great about their trigger, except that it works every single time. It is a battle rifle. It's not meant to be a competition rifle or a super fast, awesome, look at me, I'm a NRA certified instructor, I like to shoot the ceiling type guy. Uh, it's not meant to be that kind of gun. It's meant to be a fighting rifle. And for that reason, a heavier mil spec trigger is definitely okay with me for that rifle. However, I wanted to try out a Geisley, so I put a Geisley in this gun and I gotta say, it helps me shoot the gun a lot faster. I want the Geisley Super 3 Gun Trigger or S3G. I think this is a perfect single stage battle trigger in the upper tier of triggers that you can buy. There's very little that can go wrong with it. In fact, it's it, when looking at it, it looks just like every other single stage trigger, but it's just a crisp pull, a very short reset, a little bit of take up, but that's to be expected with Geisley triggers. But uh, all in all, a very, very good trigger, a great addition to this rifle, I highly recommend it. Now, full disclosure, I changed things on this rifle. So the things that we changed real quick, we added the Lantac Dragon muzzle brake to it. We added the BCM Gunfighter Mod 4 charging handle. I put that charging handle on all my AR-15s. It's simply the one that works best for me. We added Magpul's MBUS Pro steel sights. The rear is the one that has adjustment for elevation as well as windage. I really like that pair. I've been using it a lot actually, and uh, uh, it's making me kind of fall in love with shooting irons again. So great iron sight set for this rifle. We added the Geisley Super 3 Gun Trigger, and we put an EOTech optic on it. So in all the shooting footage you guys are probably gonna see in this review, there was a Trigicon MRO on it. One that was on Trigicon's lower one third mount. I switched out for a LaRue LT 839 lower third co-witness mount that was quick to attach. I really like the MRO, but uh, I'm starting to do a ton of work with EOTech text and I really wanted to put one on this rifle. Now it did come with the Daniel Defense magazine and I gotta be completely honest, I had no issues with this magazine whatsoever. Fed reliably, I treated it terribly, I wanted to see if it would fail and it didn't fail. So their magazines, as far as I'm concerned, are definitely good to go. All in all, the Daniel Defense DDM4 V9 definitely meets the standard that Daniel Defense tries to put themselves at, which is a mil spec plus standard. It's a great fighting rifle and the magnetic particle inspected full auto rated uh, bolt carrier group. You can expect long term accuracy and consistency and reliability out of this rifle. If you want a Daniel Defense rifle, 
Go get one, you will not be disappointed whatsoever. If you like this video, please click like down below and subscribe to the channel for more gun reviews and gear reviews we have coming your way. Head on over to opticsplanet.com and use the discount code TCA5 for 5% off your entire order. Check us out on patreon.com slash tacticalifornia. If you feel like you wanna help the channel out, that helps us out a ton, we greatly appreciate that. Also check us out on facebook.com slash tacticalifornia and Instagram at tacticalifornia underscore. I'm Michael with Tacticalifornia, thanks for watching.